someone on a high fat, low carb diet um, would have higher bile salts in their blood? Yeah. So I, that's a wonderful question. I don't know that anyone has ever quantified that. I've never seen it, but it's, I think you and I could both speculate that is very likely the case because when you're making more bile in, in response or releasing more bile in response to eating fat, you will reabsorb more bile. That's just a natural part of the process. So that's probably true. And that may actually be a mitochondrial uncoupling trigger, which helps increase our metabolic rate. Yep. That's exactly right. Fascinating. Yeah. Ooh, that's really interesting. The vast majority of liver transplants are caused by alcohol, alcoholic liver disease, and increasingly fatty liver disease. Mm -hmm. And there was an interesting paper in, in JAMA, you know, one of our top medical journals from last year that said that now more than 30% of liver transplants are caused by the downstream effects of fatty liver disease and that there are lack of effective therapies. Yeah. Well, you and I both know that um, conventional medicine doesn't have much training in the appreciation of dietary um, interventions in, in any disorder, uh, let alone fatty liver disease. So it, it is interesting to note the evolution or the history of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. A couple generations ago, it, it wasn't a thing even. It was just alcoholic fatty liver disease. And now we have this little addition to the prefix, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. This again is a newer problem with regards to the history of liver problems or the history of fatty liver. Um, there are, so basically the primary problem, the liver is too fat. Most of the liver fat is coming from adipocytes or fat cells that are leaking that fat. The vast majority, 80% ish of the fat in the liver is leaking into the liver from fat cells. As a fat cell is undergoing hypertrophy, it essentially starts to reach a point of maximum dimension. The physical dimensions um, are, are, are becoming problematic. And while insulin is continuing to force feed fat into the fat cell, Normally, insulin would prevent the leaking or the breakdown of that fat, but now the fat cell, knowing it's reaching maximum dimensions in order to not get too big and, and explode or have to undergo apoptosis, it starts leaking the fat. So insulin-induced inhibition of lipolysis fails, and that part of the fat cell becomes insulin-resistant. So we have an, a hypertrophic insulin-resistant fat cell now leaking free fatty acids. That is the primary source of the fat that is accumulating in the liver from the leaking fat cells. At the same time, there's a, a more minor contribution, which is the hyperinsulinemia of insulin resistance, where the elevated insulin is promoting lipogenesis within the liver itself. Now, so those are well done studies that have quantified by using radio labeled or, or, or um, tracing fat movement um, in the body. Unfortunately, those same studies did not attempt to find the contribution of fructose, which we absolutely know is a contributor. Um, the Every paper who st that studies, every scientist, every group that studies fructose and fatty liver disease notes that fructose is a massive contributor. In fact, Luke Tappy, I think, is one of the scientists in Switzerland who studied this the most. And his quote is something like, fructose is the most lipogenic molecule in the mm. liver in the body. We have some pilot studies, um, one from Duke, I know in particular, that confirmed for example, a low carb diet is effective at reducing liver fat. But we have other evidence. Basically, for me, the, the clearing the liver is the same of fat is the same way of clearing your fat cells of fat. That there are two ways to go about it: controlling insulin and controlling energy. Now, those aren't necessarily the same thing, but there is some redundancy to them. And so, even if you put anyone on a fasting regimen that is, of course, going to lower their caloric load, there's no question the liver is going to start lowering its fat and do so very dramatically. At the same time, if you're lowering insulin through, say, a low-carb diet and or fasting coupled, then you will once again be lowering um, uh, the insulin, improving fat cell insulin sensitivity, and thus removing the key contributors um, to the fat that's accumulating in the liver.